Dear colleagues, this is a hypermature Morgagnian cataract. In hypermature Morgagnian cataract, the cortical lens matter liquefies and turns into a milky fluid. Surgery in some cases impose some challenges in front of us. Number one, the intralenticular pressure is raised to some extent. And number two, the jonule is weak. And number three, the nucleus floats in the capsular bag and it is difficult to chop the nucleus without any epinuclear support. We have taken up this case for surgery. By this time, all the incisions have been made and now tripan blue dye is applied over the anterior capsule of the cataractus lens. The dye is washed out and now is the time to inject viscoelastic substance. HPMC hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose is being injected into the anterior chamber. And now the anterior capsule is being incised on side port was not made on the right side, it has been made. Now, a 26 gauge bent cystitome is introduced and the anti capsule is incised. And see what happens. The milky fluid comes out. The milky fluid is aspirated to some extent and the intralenticular pressure immediately drops. And now it is very easy to do rexis in such cases. But in this case, there was a problem. HPMC is injected again. Here it is. This is the viscoelastic substance we are using. And now, a uterta forceps is taken. The capsular tag is held and when I go at 5 o'clock, there is a fibrous tissue in the anterior capsule and the rexis faces that obstacle, that fibrous tissue. So what I am doing is I am pulling it centrally to get rid of this fibrous tissue. And I got rid of that. Now I go again to periphery and complete the rexis. So because of that fibrous tissue, the rexis is not round, but it is it is of adequate size and it is a continuous curvilinear rexis. Now the jonule may be weak so a capsular tension ring CTR is being placed to support the capsular bag. One end the leading end goes into the capsular bag now the CTR is gradually pushed into the bag and when the trailing end comes I hold very close to the trailing eyelet, take a Sinsky hook, introduce the prong of that Sinsky hook into that eyelet and I gently leave it in the equatorial region of the capsular bag. Thus, the CTR has been placed in the capsular bag. And now is the time to emulsify the nucleus. I went first bevel down and Try to hold this 
and tried to chop the nucleus but I was not successful. So what I am planning is I am going to make turn the FACO handpiece, make it bevel up and now from a distance I go into the nucleus and embed nicely into the lens matter and now I try to chop the nucleus. Since the hole does good, since the purchase on the nucleus was fairly good, I could chop the nucleus. This is the second chop and this is the third one. So it has been easy to chop the nucleus without any epinuclear support. Now is the time to emulsify the nuclear fragments. In this case the FACO power was 65 percent. Flow rate 45 ml per minute. Vacuum was 450 millimeter of mercury. Two fragments have been emulsified. This is the third nuclear fragment and one more fragment is there behind the iris. Here it is. It is brought at the center of the anterior chamber, at the center of the capsular bag and it is emulsified. That's it. Now there is a nuclear fragment, small nuclear fragment at the side port, it also comes out. Now this portion of the video is edited, viscoelastic substance is injected and the capsule is polished. Now in this case I am going to implant a hydrophobic acrylic intraocular lens. The nuclear, the cells that is that are sticking to the posterior capsule is polished with a Sinsky, with a Simcoe cannula. Now Visco is injected, the bag is inflated and this is the lens. It's a hydrophobic acrylic intraocular lens. The leading haptic goes into the capsular bag. And the trailing haptic is guided into the capsular bag with the help of this chopper and the Sinsky hook. That's it. So the nucleus is nicely placed. The haptics are in the bag. And now viscoelastic substance is thoroughly cleaned out. First with First with this Simcoe and then with bimanual irrigation aspiration. That's it the viscoelastic substance should be cleaned out nicely to avoid post of or rise of intraocular pressure. Now the side ports are hydrated. 
and a final wash with VSS is given, the anti-chamber is formed and the case gets over. Thank you very much for your attention.